This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It sure is great having you join me here in these online lessons. This is lesson two in this mini course on flat picking. As I explained in lesson one, I'm using that term flat picking a little bit more loosely than maybe it's used in the strict sense, which usually flat pickers are considered those doing a lot of the melodic playing in bluegrass and Appalachian folk style music. But I'm using it just a little bit more loosely as we're covering the rhythmic playing as well. And I think that that's important and to me it's all part of that same sort of style. Of course, lots of styles use a flat pick and use these same techniques to play. So using doing this music is just great even when doing specific bluegrass style because it crosses over to everything else. It's really a demanding style. It's super fun. But I want to cover the rhythmic playing as well as the melodic playing in this course uh, because both cross over into lots of other styles and both are super fun. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in here in the last lesson. So in the first lesson. We worked on inserting a bass note pluck into the strumming pattern. So we did bass, down, up, down, up, down, up, bass, down, up, down, up, down, up, bass, down, up, down, up, down, up. And in this lesson, it's closely linked with lesson one, because we're going to do that for three, four times. So with the three, four time, we just drop the fourth beat. So it just becomes bass, down, up, down, up, bass, down, up, down, up. 3-4 time is really uncommon or less common when we're talking bluegrass music, but we do this technique in a lot of styles, folk music, country music, even sometimes pop and rock music, or we're doing this bass down, up, down, up for 3-4 time, or other... Um, just meters that might use a similar technique. So like 6-8 time we could use 3-4 time twice or 12-8 and so on. There's there's different meters where we might be using this more tripletized bass 1-2-3-1-2-3 instead of like the 4-4 four, four time or sort of the 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and or 1, 2, and 1, 2, and sort of feel. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here work on this strumming pattern with these same chords. The other thing that I'm doing in these first couple of lessons is sort of reviewing and going through the different chords that we'll be using as we proceed through the course. So in strict bluegrass style, um, players most often play in the keys of like G and C, and then we'll use capos to move around the neck um, when they need to do other keys. But when we're playing a lot of different styles, we don't always do that. Sometimes we use these other three keys that are common in first position. And this style is definitely based on open position chords. So we're going to live right here with reviewing all the chords that are um, in the major keys here in first position because we end up using all of them. We'll learn how to do all these techniques in these keys. Okay, so. We're going to go ahead and do the string pattern, just bass, down, up, down, up, bass, down, up, down, up. If you didn't see lesson one, to do this strumming pattern, you have to be able to find the bass note of the chord. So I'll review that just a little bit as we go through. We're going to start by inserting this into this first one here, which is E, A, and B7. So for the E chord, and all types of E chord, we use the low open sixth string, because that's an E note. So bass, down, up, down, up. If you just get comfortable at E with that. And for the A, we use the open fifth string. It's an A pitch. So that would be the same for A, A7, A minor. So you get comfortable plucking out that bass note. The bass down. And B7, we got right there, second, uh, we're going to use that fifth string as well because right at the second fret on the fifth string, that's the lowest string that we're using, the lowest note of the chord. So plucking that fifth string for B7, oops, I just plucked the sixth string, which this is tricky, it takes a lot of control in the right hand, and if you're 
uh, only catching it sometimes, that's okay. Just keep working at it, keep working at it, and it'll get better and better. It takes a lot of control. I occasionally hit the wrong note uh, when I'm going for a different one. Sometimes we just don't always hit the note we're going for. So don't get frustrated, just keep at it. This is a super fun style and technique. We're gonna go ahead and play this first one, inserting this strumming pattern one time per chord, so treating each chord as if it has one measure. Now, if you didn't watch lesson one, down in the description below, there's a link to download a PDF copy of this written there with the chord progressions, so you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this first one, E, A, and B7. You got three, two, one. A, B7. So that's how that one works. If we look at the next one, A, D, and E7. So A and E7 are going to use the same bass notes as A and then E did. So E and E7 use that same low 6 string. D is the new one. If we work on that, that open 4 string is the bass note. One. One, two, three, A, D, A, E7, A, D, E7, and A. Then on the third one, we're in the key of D. We're going to use D, G, and A7. So we already know what bass notes to use for D and A. But G, we're going to use that low six string. It's the lowest one we have a finger on for the G. And that G is at the third fret actually of that low six string. So it's a G note, and we're playing that note. Here you go. One, two, three, just practicing on G for a moment. And we'll do this third progression. So you got one, two, three, D. The fourth one, we're doing G, C, and D7. So C, that's what we haven't covered. D7 is going to use that same open fourth string as D. So C, we use the fifth string because that's the lowest one we have a finger on. So that's the lowest note that's used. So when I say lowest one we have a finger on, I explained this in lesson one, but I'm going to explain it again here. Because this low open sixth string is an E, all E chords use that one. And then for the A, all the A chords use the open 5th string because that's an A and then the open 4th string is a D so all the D chords use that one. For everything else it's the lowest place, the lowest string we have a finger on. That's where the bass note is. So for C, that's the lowest place right there, 3rd fret of the 5th string. So we're going to plug that 5th string so we can warm up with that one. go. We'll do this fourth progression. One, two, three, G, C, G, D7, G, C, D7, and G. And then on the fifth one we got C, F, and G7. G7 uses the same number as G, so that low six string, with the ring finger on the third fret. F. We use the 4th string F usually in this style, so the lowest place we have a finger is on that 4th string, 3rd fret of the 4th string, so that's going to be our bass, so get used to that there on F. So we're going to go ahead and do this 5th one, we got 3, 2, 1, C.
keys that we use in first position, all those basic chords that are major or dominant seventh. So we are set if you've got these chords down. If you need help with them, there's quick answer videos that can help you. And also, if just strumming like this is hard, you could check out the basic strumming and chords mini course, or the basic chords and, and strumming mini course in the Guitar 101 portion of the Academy, and that'll get you going on all these chords as well. But we're just going to keep getting more involved. Now, in the last lesson, I showed a little bit about going faster. I'm going to demonstrate that here with E as well. So, with this one... get it going pretty fast bass down, down, down. and to do that the strumming gets tighter and it's on the wrist so rather than trying to strum big I can't do that it's hard to do fast but if it's in the wrist it can be done fast and so on so you can work this at different tempos all of these getting them faster in this style it always seems like it getting faster and faster is one of the things that we do. We also need to be able to play it at slower tempos too because sometimes we do more ballad type songs. But that'll be the end of this and the end of this review on the chords as we move forward in this lesson or in this mini course I should say on to lesson number three. We're going to start working back in 4-4 time on doing two bass note plucks per strumming pattern. So which is sort of the next step as we work up towards doing alternating bass notes and bass note runs. So that's going to be the next thing that we're going to do. I'll see you in lesson three. Take care. I hope you're having fun. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my guitar method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.